Hello, everybody. It's Adele again. <clears throat> and um, we're live once more. Let me just say hi. <laughs> and this is day six, which I hadn't planned on, but day six of our making art books. And the reason <clears throat> that we are doing another one is because, as many of you know, the sound went out on day five. So even though you could see me doing a lot of pointing, this, that, or the other, um, it's so important to me that you know why I made the decisions I did. Because I think that's really important. You, you, you work with your intuition, but you also see why, as far as the design process, it's really important to see why you chose, or why I chose the way I did, because hopefully you'll learn from that. So I want to start out again. You all have to check out hashtag art with the Dell book. So many, not only papers now, we have so many people that have shown their books that are magnificent. I mean, magnificent and, and so you'll get inspired. And so many of you have written me and told me that now you've got tons of ideas for your paintings. And that's precisely what this is about. So today I'm gonna to go back through and explain why I made the decisions I did or why I didn't put anything on there. So I'm gonna put all these aside um, and we'll just start with whatever is at the top of the pile. So I'm gonna put this aside. Oh, and I wanted to show you also that I worked on a couple of other types of books because I really have gotten into this book thing now. And there are, look at these, look at this book. Look at this, this is a folding accordion book. One side, the other side. And then look at this, here's a teeny weeny. Look at this, this side and this side. Same thing, I like to make different things. And this one is, um, just out of what oh this is that just butcher block paper and the thing i love about this this does the same thing this is a a concertina book is what they call this so you um where you move it all out like this hope you can see all that but and I, i've stayed with the theme on these new books i pretty much stayed with the theme of black and white and i made the cover for the i just cut these out of whatever paper I had that was on the thicker side um, to help stand this up. So you could actually, um, I'm curious, I haven't done this before, but look how cool that is. You could put this across your, um, just or in your or studio or in your house. I mean, it's a painting in and of itself. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna talk about those at the end and okay, I'll just have to show you what this is because I get so excited about anything new. But again, with the black and white theme, I even did the front and the back. This is out of just this paper, like this white butcher paper. And you can go see like this. And then you can turn it and see like this. And it comes out in four sheets. And again, this is super easy to do. And so um, I'll talk about this in a little while. Look at these, how cool. Now you can glue these together, but I'm not doing that on this one. So you can just pull them apart like this. Look at this. Anyway, okay, that's for later. Um, let me put this back together. So easy, and just so you know, this is super easy to put together. And I didn't have a really fun, cool colored ribbon, which I wanted, and I love to get these ribbons that are old saris and cut them and tie them. So, but I just had this twine. So that's what I'm gonna do a little later. But let's go back to, e I'm going to explain each one of these and why I did what I did. So this one, I added these tissue papers. And the reason I added this is, first of all, I hadn't used this on any of these papers yet, the tissue paper, and I didn't know how see-through it is. And I love that you can see through it a little bit, but not. it doesn't cover up the back, but it doesn't show too much of the back. So I, I put the dots, I know I was back and forth between the stripes and the dots, but this was already a stripe. And so I'm trying to get variety. Everything I do is about two things, variety 
and where your eye goes. Those are everything in painting. So I put that there because of that. And I put this here instead of the other one because again, variety. They have these black going in a diagonal so it gives it some dynamic feel. And then this was on top and I love how you can see a little bit of this. And this is the writing. So again, variety. Um, I didn't do anything here, although I thought about it. And you saw that I did had done that before and this before. And all of these decisions, every single one, I can explain because of variety and where your eye goes. You pull, do you pull your eye over here? Do you pull it up here to use the whole thing? See, all of it. I did it here so that you can come here, out here, out here, and back up here. So that's what I did there. So I'm going to put this aside, okay? Now this one. Let's see about this one. And some of them, you may just like it as it is. You don't want to have it too fussy. So I like that this is kind of plain, not plain because I don't, you don't have to go overboard. This is also, I just thought of this. This is a really good lesson in how to not overdo something. I mean, I could go to town and cover up this and cover up this and do all this and do all that. But, and if, if you're inclined to do that, go for it. But I like enough variety and have your eye go all the way around everything, but not so much that it's confusing. Um, so, and I love the contrast uh, uh, here, the red on white, the white on red. I think about these things when I'm painting, a painting. I love this, what great lines. So I decided to do straight lines as contrast. And then I did these even thinner on purpose so that I could keep the theme of the stripes here as you're looking at this, but this brings you, and look, just so you know, coming in from this left side, your eye comes right in here. It's how we read. I've read and studied how subconsciously, how our eye moves across the paper and it reads from left to right. So you wanna bring, even in a painting or a book, you wanna bring your eye in, you wanna invite the viewer in on this side of the whatever it is you're working on. And you won't, don't want to cut them off. So if you did this, look at the contrast. This wouldn't be as interesting if this background wasn't, was, was the same as this. Then it would just blend in. Um, but I think it makes it a lot more interesting because this newsprint is just different than this white. And just so you, I don't know if you remember, I barely remember, <laughs> but the background of this was something I didn't like. Um, and so don't be afraid of when you don't like something, still put it in the book because, I mean, you want the majority of things in your book that you like, but don't be afraid that if a back of a page is like, eh, I really don't like that, no biggie. You can go over it. You can collage over it. You can paint over it. You can use a marker over it. So I basically went over with a marker and then I went on top of it because I wanted to do stripes again. I wanted to keep the simplicity um, because simplicity doesn't mean simple, actually. It doesn't mean plain. You can do simplicity and have it very sophisticated, and that is things like this. So when you turn this over, the reason I put this in is because, as you saw in the last video, I did put a small one up here, but I wanted a bigger impact with this negative space. So your eye could basically breathe. But look how it goes even from over here, all the way in, around here, and this, and over here. So all those things, even negative space, makes a difference. And I, again, leads you in, and I purposely try to put things where your eye will flow, and it comes up here, and comes around here, and comes down here. So these are, even though they're intuitive, and you will get to these, the more you do, the more you will remember and the more you'll, you'll understand all of it. And it'll just come automatically like it does to me. But I didn't do too much here. I wanted to keep these. I like that. Same here. So that's the only, only thing I did for these. And then when I also turned it over, I still like what I did here, even though I can turn it over this way so I can have it either way. So that's this one. Let me put these over here. 
Now this one, let's see about this one. Um, oh yeah, I think I added a lot to this. This I put because, because I wanted to hide this edge. I wanted to hide underneath here is with some, some of this um, yellow that was on the edge and it bothered me. So I knew I wanted to put something on this edge. And again, notice how I'm inviting the viewer's eye in over here. And then I like that this is very a rigid and structured line and this is a line, but look at the edges. Edges are really important. If this was as tight and tight as this, it wouldn't be as interesting. And again, look at the background. This is the newsprint color versus the white, white of the paper. And this was one under here was a green that was like, I tried a couple things. I didn't like anything I tried. So I wanted to bring in this theme or this color to complement. And I knew that I was gonna look at red and black and white and this yellow. So when I tried this, it just seemed to work perfectly to me. I love that, and I just covered the whole thing over the green. So this, and then there was this. And I had, um, it was a taupe around it, which I love the taupe. And you can see just, I did it just enough so that you could see the edges. But again, look how your eye moves in. It comes around here, comes in and pulls you and all the way over here. And I wanted to put this over here and make it big enough because I wanted to balance this off. I didn't want to put this here because it would be too weighty and too many, too much of the yellow on this side. So balance and proportion and weight are really important. And I wanted to jazz it up just a little bit by putting this in here. I wanted to break up the stripes um, because I had that and I had these stripes. So I knew I wanted to put something over on this side because I had this over here. And as you, if you remember, I glued this together because I just liked it that way. And it was not just, you know, it just, it, it's still transparent, but it's just a little thicker and gave a little bit of more oomph to it. So I knew I wanted something over here. And because this had the yellow and you saw that I tried it in different ways, but I put the yellow on the outside so that just like this one, so that it balances it off. If I had turned this around and the yellow was here and the pink was here, it wouldn't have had the impact. This is balanced. Okay, so then you've got this and look at this, all these. These are just, I mean, these are great ideas for your paintings. And so this one, I knew I wanted to keep this kind of quiet, but I wanted something that I thought, well, let's just go on over to the other side. So again, your eye will go, will move over and help you go all over here. So that's why I put this longer one, instead of just stopping here, I wanted to put it over here. And I love yellow and black and white and taupe and red. Look at these colors. So many paintings. And then I love that this black and white I have used this paper with this pattern so many times. I think I'm out of it actually not now. So I know when you use something over and over and over, you want to be able to know, okay, I need to make a lot more of those papers. If you look at your collage tray and there's some that have been there for a long time and you're just not using them, no, don't do those anymore. But I'm gonna have to do several papers like this or similar to this because I use this a lot. And look at this, I love the organic, well, I love black and white too, but still, you've got the structured with the unstructured and organic, and this is a complement to these. So that's why, and I wanted to bring something, again, out to here to bring your eye all the way over to the edge. It gives it a weight and a balance. And look at this even, and this. So either way, this way or this way. So you can have a book that goes in either direction. I think that's pretty cool. So that's that one. And so many of you asked me, <laughs> the black dots, why, what was the black dots around? And I'll tell you, when I was working on this and I was doing this, and I, I'll, I'll explain that one in a minute, but before I get there, I wanted to tell you that when I was closing this and I was looking through it, I, this black dot just, I don't know, I got this feeling like that is really cool. And I had the what if question. What if I made this book into more of a game? 
because I think it's fun to, I mean, you can be serious sometimes, but it's also important, again, as variety, to have a little fun or mostly fun. And so I said, what if I, if I put a dot on every single page and I could try to ask my my husband or a friend or my grandchildren, can you find the black dot? Like, where's Waldo? I love things like that. So after I did this, I went through and found a place, and now where I put the dot, I thought about carefully. Because it's all about contrast. If I wanted to make it really obvious, I would put it right here because there's nothing around it. I made sure I put it close to something else and on the edge so it wouldn't be quite as obvious. And then I went here and I had the same thing here. I mean, it's kind of hard not to see it um, here, but I still thought, well, that is something. So where did I put it here? And here, obviously, look, put it on the very edge, very edge, edge. And I, I made it close enough. I could make it so that it was even harder, but again, I wanted it to be fun and I didn't want it to be frustrating. Um, and again, this is a bigger one. This is a, like a tiny one because there's no way in the world that you're not going to see a black dot anywhere on here. It's going to jump out at you. So I did that. And I've got it here because this, there actually was part of the gray here. And I thought, well, I'll just fill it in with the black dot. And I have this here and I did it close to another purple. It, the purple was already there and I did it close to the purple. So it, the values um, would blend more than just doing it on the white. And this, well, this looks like it's over here and, oh, you know what happened? This came over here and made a mark. And so now I've got two dots on this one. So that could be the exception, the two dot page. <laughs> and again, I put this in the corner to try to hide it. Oh goodness, this one also has two dots. I didn't notice that. I guess when I closed it, see, something happened here. Yeah, this went through. Somehow it went through. Anyway, that's okay. Here's one up here. Oh, there are two here. Okay, well, I guess it's a multiple two dot. And there's one. And there's one. I tried to make one really hard. I like to hide Easter eggs for my grandkids and make some really easy and some like, okay, they're never going to find it. But that's what, oh, and there's one here. So that's what, this is the black dot book. And so each one can actually have a story or a theme. It could be the black and white book, the one, the red book, all kinds of different themes. <clears throat> and that's what makes it fun. So this one, let's see what I did. I had done this before. I love this one because you can put, you keep adding. This is the one that I think of as continuing to add pieces that I might want to keep, but I don't want to use right away. And that's what I'm going to do with this one. And I did this one because I, you know, I just added a couple to this one page, but I didn't want to add too much more. And I love this. Again, make them, you know, simple and even minimal doesn't mean you have to kind of add and add and add. It's kind of like when you have a room. A lot of the modern houses have very stark and minimal rooms. And then you see some houses that are just have chotskis and stuff everywhere. So you really kind of want to think about what your style is. If you like to have tons of things going on, make a book with tons of things going on. Then try to make one where it's not tons of things going on. And this one, I really wanted to pay attention to what was on the outside. Again, the negative space colors. So this would be a cool idea for this yellow or green, this orange and gray and pink and beige in a painting. And I love this big and you saw that I added this last one over here this blue I wanted to bring again it's to bring your eye to the edge before I had that your eye stopped here but because this is the contrast between these two colors is so big I wanted your eye go from here all the way over to here and this I kind of wanted to leave plain I didn't like the one that was underneath here so I just went over this with the, it was this, 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 it was the Sakura solid marker. And I just went over it and over it. But I, I've been thinking about whether I want to add anything to this, but I don't because I want to have some quiet space, just like we do in our paintings. We want a quiet area. But what I love about this that I didn't expect is this pop through of the red that and the pink that was underneath. 
that in and of itself. You wouldn't notice that as much if I put things on top of it. And <clears throat> I really thought about this one. I wanted to put something on here, but I liked, I still liked the overall play of it. And I like to look at this and this and this. So I, I decided to just put black circles, not on every single one, but on just some of them. So it would have that contrast. There are contrasts in many different forms. It can be very stark like this, like this yellow against this black, or it can be more subtle like this on here. Oh, and this one. Yes, this one, I again, really didn't like this background at all, but I loved the look of this. And, and look at this, this got on the, this was on the paper, this orange got on the paper and made some marks on here, which I absolutely love. Now that wasn't planned. And that's why we love mistakes. We love unexpected things. And look at this shape. I want to do some, a book that's going to be just different shapes. This is not just a rectangle. This is a wonderful shape. And it came about because this was longer and I just folded it because I like this color. And look at this. This matches this, or not matches, but you know, you've got the yellow and white. You've got this pop of color, yellow, black, and blue. The orange and the blue are complementary colors. And this wonderful black and white. I haven't done anything of this yet. Now, I must say, this bothers me. So at some point, I might do something, but I'm not doing it yet. So that's how this one came about. <clears throat> Let's see what else. This teeny one. I love this little book. I think this is one of my favorites. And it's, maybe it's the size, but I love, or it, does it go this way? I forget which ways they go. But and again, isn't that cool? You can go any way. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. Okay, let's just start with this one then. So we've got this, and I love, look, this, and it, don't forget to look around it. Don't just look at this and this. Look at how there you've got this back here, You've got this pop of green, and you've got this, so your eye goes all the way to the edge. And this is repeated, sort of, so it's, it's good. Then we've got these. Again, look all over. Your eye's coming in. This is repeated circles, but again, it's a variety. They're different than this. And look how great these are. And we've got this blue and blue. Circles organic so we've got the circle kind of theme going and then the stripes and this i remember this this page was hard for me because i did put this over because i love that but i still didn't like this green at all i tried several different things and i didn't like it so i thought well i'm just going to go over with the green and initially i thought i would put something on top of it but i love having the green versus this isn't base a really desaturated green but i love the combination of these two. Again, variety. And look how fabulous. This pop of green in a painting. If you have a neutral painting with beiges and whites and black and whites, look how this green is going to look. And again, your eye goes all the way across. Let's see, is this the one? Yeah, okay, so we've got this. Same thing, eyes going across. And I like these shapes. This is, you know, you can refer to this for so many things. The shapes that you have, the combination, um, the color combination, uh, um, patterns. So I love the circles and the circles, so I didn't add anything. And uh, this is one of my favorites against this. And I love seeing this pink and beige here with even this pop of green. Look how fabulous that is, that pop of green. Makes a big difference. This is probably one of my favorites. Okay, what's the next one? Oh, I think I did these. These were the ones that I already did, but let me see if I can explain why I did what I did. I did these before we started, but uh, again, now that we're talking about variety and contrast and where your eye goes, this one, I want again, on the edge. I wanted to bring it here and way out here. And this pink brings it out here and the black and white and the purple, which I don't use too much purple, but I love it here. I like it in small doses as accent colors. So I love the black and white and the purple, and then this neutral, and then this popping through. 
And look at this. I love how this comes over and you've got this black and white. Again, this, look at all these. These are so inspiring. When I look at this book, I go, oh, I love that. That's what you want to do. And I put this just to kind of a reminder to do transparency on top of something maybe opaque. It's just fun. And I love this. This is kind of like a bookmark thing. And I gave space for the eye to rest. Now this in particular, okay, see, I don't like this. So I'm going to cover this up while we're here doing this. Should I do this one? Should I do a Posca marker? And what color? So let's just say I love this black and white, this orange. So I'm going to try a couple things. And actually, I'm going to, here are some of the leftovers that we had. Do I want something like this here? I actually kind of like that. Not that. For some reason, that does, but this definite, but it's not big enough. But that may be okay, and I'll tell you why. Because you've got this line here, which balances this line. So I am going to actually put this here. Didn't plan on it, but don't we all know that we don't plan on lots of things, and they happen anyway. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to do this over here. Okay, let's do this. And I love all this, because this kind of is a... So you can tell I really like a lot of neutral and black and white with pops of color. So that's that. And I usually go ahead and... We can do that. So that, see, that goes with this. Black and white, black and white. This ties these two together. Just that little addition actually made a difference. Oh, and I love this. And look at this. This one is going to be really inspirational to me for future paintings because I love all the, the patterns. I wouldn't have thought to have a pattern like this, which is it takes a big area, and it's not just one big you know, mark, it's the, a lot, a combination of lots of different marks. Look at the difference between this mark or th this line. We talk about line a lot. This line, which is similar to this line. This is a smaller. This is a bigger. Contrast. I love this book. And I love hot pink, I have to say. Okay, so let's put this one aside. We'll do this one, and then I'll go over these. All right, so this one. I have to say, okay, I'm laughing because... Every one, I say, oh, I really like this one. I really like this one. And I like these. Each one has its own personality. It's either bigger or it's smaller or the combination. I mean, look how many I've come out with. And you all, I've seen that you each have come out with many different books. And I love this. And, and this combination, this and ye this yellow, which is, I think, yellow ochre, and this white, bigger dots, with this and this. Oh, and this was the other thing. I took, I had this out and I look at this and you can keep it like this or you can fold it over. And I like things kind of folded over because it's like, surprise, surprise. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe, did I do that? Oh, there, okay. Maybe that's what it is. Well, look at that, see? They're always new things. So I like that, and then this. I love this. Look at this. Black on white. Black on white. This is white on black. Black on white. White on black. Black on white. So and the opposites. Oh, this is awesome. And I think I like this with this. So I'm going to close that up. Look at the black and white patterns. And I learned that I really like this pink against the dark. And I like this pattern a lot where I have a, like ellipses or oval shapes. And then it, I put go inside with some paint uh, that's different, but it's not all filled in like you're coloring in between in the lines. And I, what I like about this is that it comes off. It's not just cut perfectly, even though it slides around. Might give me another idea to do something else. And this I added because, why did I add this? There was something over here. I wanted to bring your eye, it needed some weight over here. So the combination, oh, because the dots, they're repeated. And also um, this line, this was kind of heavy over here with the bigger dots and the black. So this kind of felt like it wasn't weighted. I want to give a little bit of weight to this side. So that's why I chose that. And then this, I just threw in this for 
just because um, I had this big piece. I love the shade. And it was just like every now and then, if like you've got a black and white book or a book that's filled with neutrals, or this was mostly black and white, that you've got this, woo, look at that. The surprise in there. And that's the thing too. In our paintings, it's so great to have a surprise thrown in there. Um, so let me do this. I'm going to put this over here. We've got tons of books. And remember, go put hashtag art with Adele book. Now, I want to tell you there's something really fun happening this week, um, and it coincides with these new books, and that is my wonderful Art with Adele Academy. It's open um, till Friday, September 24th, and it's going to close till next year, um, and it is what you see how I've done this series of making art books is exactly how I teach and I show you in the academy. And um, you'll hear me talking about it all week, so I don't want to go into it too much. I'm not a salesperson, but I just want to share that. But there has been such a fabulous response to this art book making that I'm going to start, I'm going to do a couple of these for the Art with Adele Academy. So let's take a look at this. And I'll describe it, but you'll watch me do it. And I haven't even added it because it's so new. So I just, I just discovered that I wanted to do it after doing this. But I tried a bunch of them, and I wanted to do something big, something small. And I literally put all these together, all these, for yesterday. And this I love because I wanted to do something big, and I love black and white. So I did big brush strokes. After I do big brush strokes, I always use, well, a variety of brush strokes, a large one and a small one, and then some dots. So it has three different things going on. Then if, when, you, when you do this, this is um, an accordion book so that you can stretch it out. Now this is the thing too, you can, and I tried it, and I'm gonna show you on this small one, that you can glue these together, but this is also cool too. You can use this as a sketchbook. This could actually be um, something that you make and that you add to. This could be your, you know, you could have five or six of these with different colors, or you could even write in it. But there are tons of things to do, and this is just white butcher block paper. You don't need something that's expensive. Um, so here's another one, and they open up to like four pages, and I love this size. I mean, you can have it bigger, but I kind of like it like this. And you could write notes. You could try things in here. Um, and then here's one more. Let's see. Let me pull this back. There we go. Here's the last four. Look how fabulous. I love this. And this reminds me that it's a black and white. Um, and this I just, this I actually cut. I did not have this. This was from the manila folders that we had. And I just went across with the, a big black, let me show you, this Posca pen that's a big size, and I just did the stripes. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be hard. Think about not overdoing something, um, because I think that's really important. It's much harder to have less than to have more. So that's this one. Oh, and let me show you. This, this is the same sort of thing, and this one I glued, and this one I just had from like something that I had, um, let's see, some paper, just some really collage paper. This is a little bit thicker. Um, and so I just cut it the size of, of this. Look how tiny, small, and this is just enough. And this one was the first one I made, and I just stretched it out and did a black marker, again, all the way through, and I did it on the other side. And then I, I, I glued these those pieces together. And you can have it up like this. Some part, sometimes I kind of like it like this, um, I think that's really cool, especially for small, and you could make it go three times as long if you want, and then fold it all together. I think that's a really cool one, but that's that. Then, I love these concertina books. I think these are fantastic. So I did a kind of smaller one. I wanted one side to be the same sort of color, so I did one side all red, the same kind of loose strokes, and then the other side, I wanted something different, so I did, and these were made with just three pieces of printer paper. Three pieces of printer paper. And I did one paper on the back that was large pink dots, one, pa one that was small pink dots, and one that was stripes. And then I did the front side 
all three pieces had this kind of pattern. I just went like this, just kind of all around, off the page, and then that's how I made that. And I didn't even put an, uh, I haven't put a front on it um, that's any thicker because I just, I don't know. I haven't thought of if I want to put one like that, but I love this. And if you want, you can do it like this. If you have this and you want to work on something, you can do it like this. You can stretch it out. Look how fun. You can do this. You can stretch it out more. And then if you want to do something on the back, so you've got this long piece. And I painted the papers. I painted the papers before I cut them because I just like doing that. I think that's, it gives it some vibrancy. And then I thought, well, what about if you wanted to make one that you could put some of your paintings in? If you had a little painting that you had, um, like even something like this, say you like this, it could, you could have a collection of patterns or the things that you've worked on in collages and cut them out small and put them on something. You could have a whole book of that. So that's why I made this one. I wanted to show, now I have this paper, which I talked about before that I've used all the time. The ones in here are literally the last ones. Do not have any more. And so this is butcher block paper, and I wanted this to be a little bit um, bigger. So this is a little bit bigger than the these itself, and it's just simple. And so then I, I took this, and then I can open it up. Think about if you had small pieces, you could do a series of um, things on a bigger piece of paper, cut them up, and have them in this book. This could be an inspiration book. Look at that. Now, I'm going to show you, if you decide to join Art with Adele, I'm going to have a video showing you step-by-step -step instructions to make these. So I just want to remind you that you've got the Art with Adele book, but also this is what I want you to remember. Think about joining the Academy because, I'm going to put it here, it is an art school like no other. Academy. And the reason it is, is because, just like this, I have so many things in there that are fun to do. Um, even the serious parts of art, which are the basics, like color, design, and composition. I have invented, invented several different shortcuts that are going to make you go from point A to point B in like light year, like a super jump, like totally like this and you're going to have fun and you're going to laugh with me you've seen how i've made tons of mistakes you see bloopers in every one because things fall things break i laugh we have a good time so anyway this is only open um till friday september 24th so that is what this is <laughs> thank you for joining me i love you being here Bye-bye.